We're going to take a closer look at different parts of the brain and some of their functions here. It's a lot of vocabulary when you try to get into the brain in detail. And we keep looking at diagrams of the brain. So here's another diagram of the brain. Here are different versions of diagrams of the brain pointing out different areas like the Broca's area, the nucleus accumbens, motor, the motor cortex, the somatosensory cortex. There's a lot of different parts here. And uh, this is kind of an extension of the basic functions of the brain, but you need to know some of this as well too. So the cerebral cortex is the outer layer of the cerebral hemispheres that we're talking about. This is a area that has a lot of different functions and we don't know everything about it, but we can identify a lot of very specific areas. It forms the larger proportion of the brain and we already know because we are the only highly intelligent organisms you know your cat's kind of smart your dog's kind of smart but in terms of the things that we are capable of um, our cerebral cortex is more highly developed compared to other animals there and one interesting thing all these diagrams it's it's all wrinkled right the brain is always really wrinkled a lot of folding this is a theme that you've seen over and over again a lot of folding means a lot more surface area to allow for more higher order functions and to squeeze it into our little skull Human skull size also varies quite a bit, but people's brains um, in terms of their size and their potential function is pretty similar all the way around. Let's now look at a few of the functions of these cerebral hemispheres. So these diagrams here are to help us point out a few of the things we need to draw attention to. One thing that's gonna come up over and over again, and in another video I've explained this with a diagram showing the mappings from the eyes to the brains, um, the somatosensory cortex. So you're gonna see this part in italics quite a bit here. You need to understand that the information that, for example, Try to imagine, okay, you're sitting there right now, and what you need to understand is that the left side of your brain, the left hemisphere, is actually receiving information from the right side of your body, the right side of your visual field as well, and that's independent of each eye. So if you just close your left eye, and you're just using your right eye only, everything that's towards the right end is actually being processed by the left side of your brain. Everything towards the left side that you're seeing from your right eye is being processed by the right side of your brain. If you switch eyes, same thing is happening. When you're just using your left eye, everything that's on the right side of your kind of uh, experience is being processed by the left side of your brain and vice versa. So it's independent for each eye. And that's what we're talking about for the somatosensory cortex. You're receiving sensory inputs, but the opposite side of your brain is processing this information based on the side of the field uh, that you're experiencing from both eyes. The motor cortex, oh, by the way, the somatosensory cortex relative location is somewhere around here. You're less likely to be asked to identify the locations of these five things that we're talking about than you are, for example, to find the cerebellum or the medulla oblongata or the brainstem, for example. So these are very specific functions of the outer layer of the cerebral hemisphere. Motor cortex right here controls voluntary muscle contractions. So when you decide that you're going to punch someone in the face, uh, motor cortex is responding there. The visual cortex is towards the back right here. So the visual cortex is the part that processes all the information that you get from your visual field, from your retina when you actually have light stimuli going in there and triggering your rod and cone cells, that's the area that's being lit up. And this part is just talking about the same thing we talked about with the left versus right part of the visual field and which side of the brain is actually processing that. Using all the information that you collect from your actual eyes, your visual cortex helps you to decipher all that information so you can judge the distance of things, the size of things, the speed of things, and the direction in which they're moving as well too. Broca's area is related to speech. Patients who've had damage to this area obviously um, have problems with their speech and that's usually how we figure it out. We start with finding someone who has an issue, identifying which part of their brain we can stimulate, and then being able to put that in the books as that's probably an area that Broca discovered. Therefore, we call it the Broca's area. And finally, one extra little kind of extended bit you need to understand is that this little place here called the nucleus accumbens 
is the pleasure reward center and different types of the stimuli depending on what type of stimuli you're talking about can cause the release of dopamine which is a hormone that brings you the feelings of pleasure and satisfaction nucleus accumbens so if you're talking about something that's very pleasurable while you're punching someone in the face then those are the three parts that are going to be lit up all right